recording. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Get started here. Awesome. New Matt. Mark is a member of our advisory board, one of the very first members of our advisory board. It's been a huge help for us in really understanding what the zeros and ones that come out of our map, what they mean, why they're important, and then most importantly, how to make them actionable. So I remember one of your revolution golf videos was the, the first one that I actually saw on the body track and helped me just understand exactly what's going on here. Cool. And uh, so today, I mean, I'll let you talk about, about the, the topic, um, but is understanding the link between pressure, what goes on, force and pressure-wise, and then club time. So. Right, right. Well, but thanks, Hi, everybody. Where's everybody from real quick? Melbourne. Melbourne, awesome. Kentucky? Kentucky? Kentucky. How about in the back? Ottawa, Ottawa Toronto. Sorry, it centers, Leafs. You, you beat us in OT the other night. <laughs> I know. I'm a big Leafs fan. How about you guys? Uh, Florida, Florida, awesome. So local boys. Ontario. Ontario, another Canuck? Awesome. Thank you. Where, so you're a Toronto fan or Habs fan? Toronto. Toronto fan. Nice. In the back, where are you guys from? Florida, cool. So you familiar with the body track? Do y'all own one? Awesome, way to go. So this mat, I gotta be honest with you, this one's sexy. This thing looks really good. I've had this version, I think I have a little slightly bigger one, and I'm loving this. Is this thing on right now? Get this thing going for me? Yeah. You have people hitting some golf balls? We had a few minutes ago. Okay. Good, so I'm really excited to, to start using the new app, John. Gotta be honest with you. You know, through V1 it was fine. But it'll be great to be able to, uh, you know, a little bit about, uh, my name's Martin Chuck, and I'm, uh, I grew up in Toronto. My mentor was a Canadian fellow named George Knudsen. A lot of you probably heard of George. Great ball striker. He was an um, eight-time winner on the PGA Tour. Got to meet him when I was nine years old. And the first lesson I have with George was all about weight pressure, and I really didn't understand it then. He just made it really simple, okay? We took a golf club, put it across our waist when we were little kids, and we're kind of staring at this Canadian legend and he kind of made us do this motion right here. Then he made us kind of bounce a little bit right there, and you can see the representation up on the board. So as little kids, we didn't even hit a golf ball. You know, he took us from what he used to call taking a starting form, okay, an address form, and he wanted us to take an address form and connect it to a finishing form. And a Newton's, like a patented Newton finish would be something that overtook the bottom, went around him, and then a restful finish. Now the representation of that on the board is a little bit more weight in the heels, a little bit on the right toe. And so at the golf school, every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in Phoenix, I have 10 to 12 people come to a golf school from all over the place. Melbourne, Melbourne, we always say, right? Uh, a lot of Canucks come down. We always talk about hockey, which is cool. And then people from wherever, they come to the golf school. And it's good fun. And the way we started is very much in that, um, in the way that George taught me because the people that come to the school aren't tour players. They are people that are maybe six to 24 handicaps. They want to find the middle of the face a bit more often. In finding the middle of the face more often, we have to come back to how their body reacts to the ground. And I'm not going to talk, I don't talk to my students like uh, some of the PhDs might talk about ground force reactions and pressures and torques and that because to me it's a game you play and as a coach I want to understand all those little tidbits but I really don't want to tell you that. You know what I mean? I want you thinking about the target. I want you to think about what you're standing on. And I want you to think about the inertia and energy you, know, you can create kind of freewheeling a golf club into a finish, a nice restful George Newton finish, OK? Because this was step one with him. We did that motion of putting the club across her legs, swinging the club, arriving in balance. And then guess what? We did that a few more days. And then we got to put a ball on the ground. Right, so that's a little different, right? No, obviously the people that got to see George were, we came from falling in love and playing the game. And then once he kind of knew, all right, these guys are already players, and then we got into kind of understanding the ground. And with body track, you can understand ground really, really well. Now, when John said to me, hey, Martin, would you mind speaking you know, at the PGA show? I said, sure, I'd love to. And I apologize for being late. Totally sorry about that. The, he said, what do you want to talk about? And I'll say, how about the correlation between pressure on the ground and path, club head path? And so during my spiel at the golf school, you know, I'll hit a few shots, I'll have some fun. And it's always fun first, okay? So I'll top a few balls on purpose and ask people, hey, watch and let me know if my, head, if my head's rising, you know? And I'll go, I can top golf balls pretty well, dipping 
a foot and a half and crowning them, right? You ought to try it. It's good fun. And so then I'll get into, well, hey, let's, uh, let's have this discovery session. Let me put a golf ball. I'll just do it. Let's have a little fun here. I can't smack them over there. It might hurt somebody. But I say, let's put a golf ball in a normal address position, left center in her stance. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and balance myself on my trail foot. And usually people are sitting in some chairs right here. And I'll say, how can I get to this golf ball right now? Do I have an opportunity to get to this golf ball inside out at all? Can my swing circle come down and touch the golf ball going inside out? And naturally people will look and go, no, I don't think so. And then I'll say, how can I get to the golf ball? And then I'll show them this behavior because I can, I can hit plenty of pull fades from there. Okay, and I'm probably not going to close the face and hit it into the ground, am I? Probably going to hit a pull fade, let my left elbow buckle, and hit a chicken wing finish, right? So they'll look at that and go, okay, cool. And then I'll set up normally, and I'll hit a few shots like that, and they're weak shots. So if I hit a 7-iron 160, I can maybe muster it out there 120 yards that way. High dynamic loft, weak fade, not going very far, okay? So then I'll say, how about the alternative? There's my normal ball location. Let me put my weight pressure over here now and hit some shots for you. Now they can see from this, it's puberty, sorry, my voice is cracked. They can see from this that my golf club can now approach the golf ball from the inside out. Is that pretty, everybody can see that, right? You're all professionals in the business. You're like, Martin, tell me something don't, I don't know, right? But what's interesting is when I hit shots from here, and I do, and I encourage you to learn how to do this. If you don't, hit shots off one, one leg, do it. Because right now they're getting kind of an education, although I wouldn't necessarily want my upper mass, my upper center here. They can see how a golf club can approach now from the inside out to hit a ball. And I'll hit some low, hard, ropey hooks out there that'll start well right of target line and draw back to or across the target line, right? The ball flight will be strong because naturally I'm way ahead of it. And then I'll say to them, would it make any sense for me to come over the top now and harpoon myself in my left thigh? It wouldn't, would it? Zero sense, okay? So now the student's sitting back there and they're scratching their chin and they're going, how do I apply this? Because a lot of the people you coach, you know who I love? People with time and money. Because those are the people that come take a lesson from me, right? And hopefully you get a lot of those people too. Maybe they don't quite have the balance to kind of do what's going on with one foot. But if they can, challenge them to. Hit off your right foot or your trail foot only, right? Hit off your lead foot. See what happens. Because the interesting thing with the body mat, like with the pressure mat, we'll see this trace right here. We'll see this person retract the arm, open the face, and in a, in a 1.3 second golf swing, now they have to get from the top of backswing with some kind of funky position, and this face is way, way, way in an open condition, and the 0 .4, 0 .3 something it takes to get to a golf ball, they're gonna figure out how to try to get this weight to the toes and create this little half circle that goes out to the toes and back to the left foot to give themselves time to kind of push their trace and back their trace up. Okay, so they give themselves time to not hit it right of right. So they're trying to figure out through some poor wrist conditions how to do that. So, you know, I wouldn't call this necessarily a stack and tilt lesson, but I mean, I love learning from other coaches and I think I give massive credit where credit's due and I think Mike Bennett and Andy Plummer did a nice job with a lot of things on showing some people, you know what, you can, if you kind of put yourself in the way of leftward path, okay, you can teach somebody how to have some inside out rightward path. Now I'm not saying I'm gonna do that with them the full time because I like a little bit more dynamics, right? Which is my next point is I'll take a student and I'll get their, whoop, get that trace going. Oh, sure, sure. I'll show them, I'll get them on. We have one in the studio and then we use one outside and uh, let that thing connect. Yeah. No, no worries. Batteries? But while well, John's working on that, I'll have them, I'll say, hey, I want you to watch 100% of my weight shift go to my right foot. You ready? You know, and they'll say, you watch it? And I'll just go like this. And they'll, and they'll look at me and I'll say, watch again, because you're going to miss it. And I'll say, 100% of my weight went to my right foot, because my left foot came off the ground a fraction. Right? Don't your students all think that a weight shift is something that has to go dramatically? You're fine, buddy. Dramatically to the right and then therefore to the left. So when you get them on the pressure mat and you're educating your students and you're giving them awarenesses they didn't have prior to seeing you, you educate the golfer, you expand their horizons a little bit, now they've got tools, don't they? 
So standing there on the mat, and Nate, so we're almost good to go. So standing on the mat, pressure back and forth, this, you know, this center, a pressure dot is just flying back and forth under each heel, just from doing this. So now they're looking at it like, wait a second, you mean I don't have to take my center of mass and put it on top of my center of pressure? And I'll say, no, you don't, because you don't have time. And they'll say, what do you mean I don't have time? I'll say, who's your favorite swing? Invariably, who do they say? Take a guess. Ernie Els. Genius, right? You're right. I'm telling you, nowadays it's changing. You get the Rory McElroys and you get Jason Days. But, you know, most of the folks, I oh, love Ernie Els. Freddie Couples, those guys. And I'll say, you know, Freddie, Ernie Els, what's a swing? You know, swings it pretty fast. Probably, probably still swings at 115. You know, I'll say, he's got a, you know, it's a pretty smooth swing. And then I'll take usually one of their swings put them side by side, and here's the big easy, you know, 6-5, bam, right, just gorgeous. And then here's that student, right? By the time Ernie gets to the top, this is your typical student. You know, by the time Ernie's at impact, your typical student's getting to the top. And then they look at that and they go, wow, okay. And I'll say, okay, let's get on the mat, and let's feel that center of pressure zipping back and forth, kind of like you're doing a football drill. You know, because I want them to feel their mass between their feet. Then I want them to feel that a golf swing, I'll use the word sling a lot, that the golf club is being slung. Watch my foot pressure here, because I really want to give this thing a smash, okay? So see how it's going left and right and left and right and left and right and left and right and left and then right. Okay, I teach a lot of people a lot more dynamics by getting the visual, and I put a TV right in the ground to where they see that follow the bouncing ball, follow the bouncing ball, and then they can feel it go left, and then they can feel it go right. And in the feel of going right, that helps them do what? Sling a golf club to the top dynamically, not just simply go and place it to the top, right? So when you're, you guys all, everybody teach in this room, I assume, right? So what do they want? What's the first thing people want? What do they want? Okay, distance, good. I'll tell you what I hear more than distance is consistency. You see what I mean? I hate that word, right? Consistency. But you're right, and so when I do their little checklist when they come to the golf school, it's always, I want consistency, then I want distance, oh, and I can't chip and I need to get out of bunkers. Okay, so that's usually what I hear, right? So in consistency, I try to explain that, Newton used to say to me, if you have centrifugal relationships, okay, in, in golf, this is why I, I start people making swings like this, and I want them to feel, no ball, this pull. I want them to feel a centrifugal pull. Okay, when they can feel a centrifugal pull, carry them to a target, try to explain, okay, what'd you feel in there? And they'll say, well, I said, do you feel like you're maybe, you know, backing up for any reason? They say, no, naturally not. You know, you feel a centrifugal pull kind of take you to your lead side, and maybe they can't quite arrive in, in balance, but generally they can do that, right? And then from there, you know, I'll try to, I'll put a golf ball on a tee and see where things change, okay? Things will change, and then as a coach, you're going to go and say, okay, why did they change? Why did their pressure change? But now, if they can have feedback from looking, and I'm doing this as though I'm standing in my studio looking at my television on the floor, because I do have one there, if they can feel this feedback and they can make this motion of feeling pressure, 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 go and arrive and balance on the lead side, you guys and gals, I'd, rec I, I'd seriously encourage you to, to give them that awareness of moving their swing in, through inspiration of their attachment to the ground. Okay? So, you know, as far as using this, as a corrective tool. They're going to see their first trace. When they come through the golf school, they run through the stations of testing. They hit nine shots on a track man with a nine iron, a seven iron, and a driver. Okay? And we track how far and what they curve. We don't tell them their, their numbers. They go through a low point line drill outside. They hit out of a bunker. They chip, they pitch, they putt. Uh, they, they hit some drivers off their knees. They go inside. They got a, I got a four camera thing. They hit on body track. Okay? So we'll typically we'll see the person that comes sees me is one of those where the pressure goes toes, toes, heel, steep, some of them fix it, you know, and then when they fix it, the golf club gets pitched this way, and then they're going to have to do something with their hands last second to be any good, or they just hit big peely, peely fades, okay? So since this is a body track demo, 
you know, we'll get them in here and we'll show them the bouncing ball and how quickly it can go left and right, left and right, left and right. And they've been outside and they've seen the demo of how inside out path can be achieved where weight pressure is in the lead foot and how outside in, you know, for the right hand golfer, the way you're looking at me, is basically the only way you can hit it solid from over here. So one of the things George taught me was rotate and relocate. Okay, so this is something you'll hear a lot in my golf school, is that every golf swing, they're to rotate, relocate, and we use the expression, they're going into a turn, okay, a tuck, and then a tap. And on the screen right there, as I tap the mat, you know, my right toe's up there in the top right quadrant, so here's their turn, tuck, and tap. So every shot, whether it's a little punch to arm straight, or when they're making their swings, more full swings to a restful finish, turn, tuck, and tap, okay? Now, you guys have any questions? Anybody want to fire off anything about, you know, why I do what I do? I know, um, why are you all here right now? Do you, have you bought a body track? Did you want to hear me say a few words? Do you have a couple questions? I don't know. So you got to help me out here. Am I putting you to sleep, just trying to digest some lunch? What's the deal? Anybody? Nothing? Okay. Everybody in the room own a body track? Put your hand up if you own one. Okay, so everybody owns one. So let me, let me throw this back at you guys. Let me ask you, Zach. How are you, Martin? So what have you learned from using body track? Um, honestly, I, what we're, we're kind of here for is we're, we're, we're just pulling out the box. So, uh, okay. You know, I love all that it kind of gives you, but uh, right. looking at just how everybody uses it. Okay. So, so you want to learn how to use it. Right? So when somebody, has, when somebody hits a shot and you have a file stored and you put their name up there and it goes into their folder and they've got a video that they can, you can send them and you can review, right? Like first off, that's a checkpoint for you as a coach to say, this is where you were, right? And this is, and you'll see these certain little loops. And you'll see in, in patterns where it's pretty easy to get somebody that's sitting back on their heels. Well, it's pretty tough to be dynamic from here right? And then you can, it's pretty quick to say, well, you know, you're in your heels and hit some shots, right? And then to move them a little bit more athletically, sort it to where they can use the ground and rotate a little bit cleaner from more central ball of the foot, right? So in using it, you're going to put one of the videos in their folder, the first one you take. You're going to review it as a coach and a good player, and you're going to see what that trace does. You know, you'll see a variety of traces. You know, most, you'll see a lot of traces where it's a very You'll get a lot of good players get a little left a little too fast, get a little stuck and not have anywhere to go, and they'll have to kind of extend themselves and, and get some room, okay? So you'll find with good players, you'll see this. You'll see, and I get guilty of this, way too much weight, way too fast, and then all of a sudden I've got to make some room for myself, okay? So as a, a good player using this, and you get a good player that says, man, I'm just kind of hooking it a little bit, and I'm blocking it a little bit, and I'll say, okay, cool, let's have a look. And typically, I'm going to see this. You know, they're going to have their weight get left very fast. There's, very, there's no pressure on the right foot or very limited, right? And then they're going to extend. The handle's going to rise. And they're going to lose control of the club face. I'm that guy, okay? So my feels, for me, as a decent player, okay, is to feel like I am, my center of pressure doesn't go left as fast. I can't help myself. I've been playing golf my whole life, right? I just can't help myself to go fast really quick. But I've got to feel like I can rotate and get my the button on the ground underneath my foot later. Okay, now the higher the handicap goes, I try to get that person to go to the top and go, and literally fall there. You know, fall, get, feel that, because they've never felt that, right? Because they're too worried about a face that's looking like this on the way down. So they're trying to fix a face, and their pressure's gonna go back behind them, right? So if you get them over here, guess what? You're gonna have, this face is gonna have to change, isn't it? That's why I'll take, I'll take somebody like that and I'll just kind of put them there. And I use a clicky whiteboard that a guy named Mark Evershed invented. Okay, he was a coach of mine, Canadian guy, great teacher. And I'll put them on the clicky board, right, to where they're like 100% left. And I do that so that they can harpoon themselves and they have to kind of go. And I'll use a track man as well to kind of measure so I can say, hey, you're, look, that's pretty cool, huh? You've never hit a, had a rightward path. Now there's other things that, you know, risk conditions are a big deal in path. You know, that I could do this. This right here could have massively inside-out path or massively outside-in path, that motion. 
all because where the club's mass went on the way down. Okay, so a lot that plays a big role into it too. So better player stuff, you're going to see they're going to get their weight pressure too left too fast, right? Where I'm looking for a little bit more of a peaceful relocation and rotation for the better player because that better player knows how to shallow it, right? The poor player doesn't know how to shallow it, so they're going to back up that trace and they're going to get the, the shaft steep. Then they're going to figure out a way to reverse the face, you know, so they can kind of make it go straight, but it doesn't have any punch on it, okay? So, question. Brian, I know you're a little unique doing a lot of golf schools. Sure. Um, do you ever think about track on course? Someone that you guys know with You know what, Ry? Honestly, guilty. Haven't. I've thrown it in the bunker. I've had it on the, on the on side hills. I put it on the lesson tee. I've never rolled it out on the golf course. You know, and I'll be honest, I just, the only reason I probably haven't, and I will now, is because of the new app. I won't, I wasn't a V1 guy. I didn't care for V1. Okay, so I use it because I kind of had to. Right now I'm excited, and I hope nobody isn't V1 in here, but I mean, I just, there's too many platforms I'm on, right? So I only like a couple of my platforms. And now that I can, it's simplified, you know, I probably will toss it on the T. Because again, we're, we're, it's, we have a habit loop, right? We, we have this habit loop, and I always tell somebody, man, that's different, man, I, that's so different. And they'll, they'll say to me at a golf school, God, I'm thinking about so many things, and I'll say, good, I got you right where I want you. You know, and I'll say, just, this is unfamiliar, and welcome unfamiliar. You came and you signed up because you want unfamiliar, believe me. Okay, you'll get, you'll make the brain-body connections, it'll become more familiar. You know, and, and through this tool, it's a way of measuring, you know, for either the good player or the newbie that just has to learn the newts and stuff on how to rotate and relocate on top of a left foot. What better way to, you know, to have them do this and take a, tra you know, put that trace in their folder, right? And show them that trace without a golf ball there. And then you say, well, why do you think your trace is so different when the golf ball's there? Be like, I don't know. I guess I'm trying to hit the ball and I should just swing. And I'd say, well, it's a little bit more detailed than that. You know, we have to take care in how we put our hands in the club. We have to take care in how this all gets kind of assembled at the top, right? And when you can do that, now all of a sudden, the back of the house, I call it the back of the house, the genius part of us. The genius part of us isn't fixing things in 0.3 seconds to have functional in front of us, right? So you, I don't care who you are, you react to the golf club, it's, the way it pitches and where the face is pointing. Me or you or a, a newbie, they figure out in two swings, wow, man, it, that, that, I don't want it to go that way every time. I'm going to figure out how to help it go more that way. And then naturally my weight goes, kicks way back to the mat. You know, so this, and I, I like to think I'm sort of a simple coach among all the, the, diff, the, 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 the bless you, the difficulty and challenges of the game, right? Because I always say to people, anybody can play golf, but not many people can play really good golf. Okay, I mean, that's a fact. Who's a musician in here? Anybody? Play anything? What do you play? Uh, I just took up guitar. Good for you. Simple, right? Yeah. Guitar made simple. I'm just going to rock out like day one. You know, that's rubbish. Well, I have two little kids. I started play, play, um, playing piano two years ago. So much fun, man. But my first time I rolled up in front of the keyboard, right? 52 keys. I don't know. They're white and black. That's all. There's, no, there's nothing on there. Well, now, like through training and application, guess what I can do, right? In feedback, I can put my hand. I know where C is. I know how to play a little melody on my right hand. I know how to play basic chords on my left. I mean, I, I'm not going to get a whole lot much better. But through like the f a little bit of training every day, a few simple minutes every day, I build my familiarity to it. I'm making these brain-body connections. And I'm a massive fan of training aids and feedback mechanisms. I've invented a few, Tour Striker products, okay? And then I, I have, I, I always joke, I won't be out teched, okay, in my studio, because I think that if I see you and I see what you're up to and you need a bit of tech that turns a switch on for you quicker, I can explain it and I can paint a picture and I can tell a story, which I like to do, and I'll give stories and pictures, but if I can give you objective feedback immediately, not subjective, which is a story and a, and a feeling, but objective feedback immediately and have you stand there and I can show you that file and I can save the one I really like and I can you know, show you the ones I'm not thrilled about and ask you, okay, what'd you feel differently there? And I'll put somebody on the mat and I'll give them an eight pound medicine ball and I'll say, throw the mat, throw the ball into my net. And guess what I've never seen yet? Never seen that yet. It's pretty simple, right? You'll see them take this ball and go, every time, and they'll go, oh, that's cool. Come take a look at that one, right? That one's pretty slick. And yet with a golf club, they'll go back this way. 
And so now as a coach, you're connecting the dots as to why the back of the house is doing that to the front of the house. The conscious, some conscious tug of war. We all have it, right? Because if, if you didn't have it in this room to a degree, guess what? You'd be playing probably at the highest level like I tried to, right? We all have this little tug of war. Maybe that wasn't gifted athletically enough. I don't know. But, you know, something didn't connect when I tried to play for a few years back there. But I, t I love sharing coaching. I love the fact, like, the lessons I got from Knudsen and Mark Evershed and Mike LeBove and Mike Hebron and a ton of coaches that I would ask questions to. You know, Jim McLean's and uh, Hank Caney's and guys like that that have been doing it a long time, right? Because they have wisdom. Whether you believe in their methodology or not, they have great wisdom. And irregardless of technology, they've helped golfers a variety of ways get better. So when you ask all these coaches stuff, you get pearls, right? So hopefully a couple of things I've said today maybe, you know, give you a little bit of wisdom when you coach as to, all right, you know, you got to, the only way you're going to interact to hit this ball is, is to stand on the ground, right? And Newton's lessons, and I know maybe some of you are teaching tour players. Most aren't, and that's okay. I really don't care to. I've got a couple, but I don't care to. I love teaching a guy who's 60 who wants to be a 10, and he's at 18. Okay, so you, you show him some different patterns and you challenge him and then you give him objective feedback, right? He can't argue with you, they all want to, but if he can't argue with you and he starts to see changes for the better, you know, objective data with a mat, with a track man, with video, you know, now, you know, because some people want to, especially the rich old guys I like teaching, right? Because they, they know a lot, right? You got to show them progress. And when you have a really good trace and a beautiful striker, save that file. Right? Keep that file handy. Drop that file in there. I use Edufy platform. I drop the great files right in there, you know, weak traces, right on top of a weak trace so they can see, like, a Nick Taylor, you know, who's got this great, you know, linear trace that, and Adam Hadwin, you know, just beautiful linear traces. And then my, one of my assistants is a long drive guy, Jim Walder, and he just swings at 145 miles an hour. Okay, fly ball 400 yards. Got to the world long drive a couple of times and got beat out in match play. But he's He's one of the guys capable of winning the thing. His trace is interesting, right? Because, you know, naturally it goes very, very, very right-sided, a little bit of left toe present in the backswing. Okay, it goes hard left, hard right. This, this foot's not even visible for a while on the mat. Like, literally, it's like this crazy zigzag, and then naturally it kind of, he bounces and tries not to fall over over here. So you couldn't teach that guy to try to have a pattern that you would try to show some lady at the club where you'd probably want her just to have, you know, just this clean little trace that takes, goes to a left foot all of George Newton. The powerhouses, right, have this crazy exchange back, forth, back, forth, and finally into a finish, right? So as a coach, you know, you see that, perfect. They're heavy users of the ground, heavily dynamic, and, you know, engage that. Teach them that, right? You got some kid, because I wish I, like Newton, not knocking him, but he was more about hitting it down the middle and not hitting in the woods. But in a flash forward now, when I get kids and they're, they're keen at all, I want them to fall over when they hit the driver without, you know, try to, I say fall over, but, I mean, hit it as hard as they absolutely can because you can always learn how to swing it easier, right? I try to inspire speed with it without them falling over, but hit it as hard as they can, okay? So any last questions, you guys, before we wrap it up? John, is that good? I can talk for hours, man. Cool. Thank you, guys. Cool. Cheers, pal. Yeah, and guys, I'm at uh, the Raven Golf Club in Phoenix, Arizona. If you ever get down that way, a golf school there is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If you ever want to grab a chair and sit into the tent and hang out and watch or whatever, because I used to love watching coaches, you know, you're, you're welcome to do it, okay? And my email, martin at tourstriker.com. If you ever have a question or something, shoot me a note. Thank you. What's that? I do about 30 golf schools a year. Yeah. Uh, 10 to 12. Sometimes bigger ones. I'm on a platform, Revolution Golf. So Andrew Rice and I will do like traveling ones, and we all have. We did Band and Dunes and a couple other places where there was 24 people, but then we bring our assistants, so there's at least at least a four to one. Try to do three to one coaching student ratio. Yeah, good fun. Yeah, thank you guys. Sorry I was late. <laughs>